Good morning. Our scripture reading today will be Psalm 51, 5 through 7. <clears throat> Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in, my, in, my, in, in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts shall, thou shalt make me no wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Good morning, church. I got my mic on here. Before we begin, let me get settled here, and we will have a word of prayer again. So nothing's better than prayer. All right. Dear Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the privilege we have of studying your word. Help us that we may see you in its right, your rightful place. And I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a part of a series I've been doing. You probably haven't remembered them all. I'm sure you haven't. And my wife tells me I shouldn't be talking about a series, but they all fit, so whether you miss one or another, it's okay. But I remember I told you I, this is a Ron Clouset series that we did in Des Moines. How many ever went to the one in Des Moines that they had several years ago, Ron Clouset talking about the uh, church works? Okay, good, Glenn, you went. You're the only one from here that did, huh? Didn't you go, Jeff, or you remember? Ron Clouset, you remember Ron Clouset? Yeah, okay, good, so that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of redoing it. The first one was The Real Me, and I'd like you to turn your Bible, if you with me, just kind of follow this along. Um, let's go to the book of Timothy. Timothy. Uh, Timothy, let's see if I can find it for you. Timothy chapter one, and verse, four, verse um, 15, verse 15, First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners, of whom I'm what? Chief. The first one I talked about is the real me. Remember I told you that I look myself in the mirror and I say, you know how bad I am and I need changing. So you have to recognize who we really are. And then this one here is on created again. It's basically what to do to establish a relationship with Jesus. So we realize who we are, but why we need him. And that's what this one, this was on, uh, created again. So let me get my power thing. Brian, I'm already hooked up, right? So if I need to go, you'll change it. You remember Dr. Evans? Dr. Evans served as the senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship for over 40 years. Long time for a pastor. What's the longest you've had the pastor stay here? Glenn, what would you say? What's the longest time you've had a pastor stay here? Nine years? That's good. Here's a guy that's been for 40 years. It grew in 19, it had 10 people in 1976, and now it has over 10,000 congregants. Pretty powerful, we would say. 100 plus ministries. In growing up, though, he faced an inner city poverty, chaos at the home, and also his parents were on the brink of divorce. But at age 10, he says his life changed forever. What happened? It was the year his dad turned to Jesus and became an instant evangelist. But his mother disapproved. He said dad would have to go downstairs, read the Bible in the middle of the night because she didn't want anything to do with the Bible, didn't want anything to do with God. 
My mom didn't like my dad as a sinner. She liked him even less as a saint. Then it said that one night my mom came down the stairs with tears in her eyes. My dad was reading the Bible as normal. But she said she told him and she couldn't understand how the more she rejected him, and was unkind to him and tried to prove him that unbelieving in that believing in God was wrong, his, he, the kinder he was to her. And the more he invested in God's word. Then she makes this unique profound thing. She said, I want what you have because it must be real. Pretty moving, isn't it? Now, this illustrates how God changes lives. And I'd like you to turn in your Bible because we're going to spend some time in Psalm 51. Now, what is Psalm 51 noted for? Very famous passage. Talk, talk to me, church. What's Psalm 51 noted for? Hmm, interesting. Okay. Remember, that's the story of uh, forgiveness, Bathsheba. Remember, went into Bathsheba, committed adultery. That's what Psalm 51 is. But Psalms is actually a story of conversion. We're going to see that. There are three C's of Psalm 51. He creates a desire. So if you're, you're in Psalm 51, you should have Owen read the other one. But let's go to verse 10. Create, that's the first C. In me a clean heart, O God. That's the second one. He cleanses the heart. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and hold me up to your generous spirit. Then I will teach the transgressors your way and sinners shall be what? Converted. That's the third C. The convert converts others. You ever see that in Psalm 51? It's a story of telling our story of how God changed us to bring other people to Christ. Very unique principle. So let's look at the first point. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Nicodemus... Nicodemus came to Christ by night. He was not happy with his walk. He was attracted to him because of his miracles. But underneath all that power that he had, that he welled up, he knew that something needs to change. He was not happy. Now notice this. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. How many of you ever look for the kingdom of God around you? Can you see God's kingdom around you? Can you see that? See how he's working? I'll tell you some unique stories that really was good that helped me. Notice this. This is a quote from... Uh, Dr. Vincent, he said, the things of God's kingdom are not apparently apparent to the natural vision. A power of sight is required which is attached only to a new man. I kind of like what Jack said in Sabbath school today. I thought that was very keen. And that is that every day he tells his children and when he reads at night, right, what, how has God blessed you? And it has to be specific. Specific things. Should have Jack tell you that sometime. But I think it's a good idea. That's excellent. Excellent. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians here. That's a good text to look at. I want you to exercise yourself in the Bible. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's get there. And verse, is it 14 there? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 14. That's a good one. Let me get there, get there. 
Are you, are you getting there? You probably already got it. Okay. It says here, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They don't have that eyesight. Notice this quotation. There are, are there not those who hold responsible position who would be irritated and annoyed if they should someone testify to them that though they are rulers of Israel or leaders in the church, they need to be what? Born again. Now notice this. This is from the Council of Stewards. Jesus laid bare the first principles of truth. It's about Nicodemus. And show that Nicodemus, his first need was what? What's his first need? Humility of heart. And a what? Teachable spirit. But not only that, but a new heart. If he'd enter the kingdom of God. So he has to humble himself, be a teachable spirit, because we are born, born of what? Sinful. We are born sinful. We are born in sin. That's what Psalms 51 is telling you. That's what he's saying, that we're born in sin. Notice, he's, tell, he's talking to Nicodemus. When you parallel Nicodemus, John 3 with Psalms of 51, you're going to see the parallel. Flesh gives birth to what? Flesh, but the spirit gives birth to? Spirit. So what is he, he's Jesus saying here? He makes it clear that even though he doesn't see, see it, it's, you, you, also need to, you also need to enter into the joys. You have to understand what the joys are. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water, by the way, this is a picture of the Hawkeye Church, and uh, this is uh, the new pastor, Pastor Fender. I, we, just, we, we did pastor that church, a nice little church, a wonderful church, very full. And uh, this is, uh, let me see if I can show you that, the red light. Yes, right in here. This one is Cheyenne. She was just baptized the day, and then the next day we went to their wedding. This young man here is the guy that's bringing young people in the church. In fact, the lady here that's being baptized was because of his work. It's a young person. He's probably no more than what, surely, would you say 20? Yeah, in the early 20s, and just, just amazing. But it's not only important to be born of the water, but in other words, you're going to see it's important that we're born of the what? The spirit, the born of the spirit, those are, those are so crucial there. A Christian life is not a modification or improvement of the old, but a transformation of what? Nature. Nature. Two diverse things cannot at one of the same time occupy the very same place. Your own life, a life of God, cannot fill the heart at the same time. Your life hinders the entrance of God, the life of God. When your own life is cast out, the life of God will then fill you. As long as it continues to write, Andrew Murray, as long as I myself am still something, Jesus himself cannot be everything. My life must be expelled then the spirit of Jesus will flow in. Let's put it this way. Now, this is what thought the mom of says. You cannot retain self and yet enter the what? Kingdom of heaven. See, self is the problem that gets us in the way. It gets in our way, isn't it? I know I make mistakes. I still make mistakes. But if we ever want to attain holiness, it will be through the renunciation, that's rejection of self, and the reception of the mind of Christ. So notice the reception of the mind of Christ means accepting, accepting Jesus. Pride and self-sufficiency must be crucified. If we find, this is an interesting thought, this is an Adventist author, if we find a Christian experience is demanding and what? Exhausting, 
leaving us constant feelings of inadequacy and fertility, that's uselessness, then we are living primary on our own efforts and are forced to serve self into imitating Christ, to force self into imitating Christ. Now, when a baby is born, he's usually, or she, whoever it may be, is unaware of what's happening to him. The character of the newborn is the arms are folded, head is bowed, knees are bent like what? Prayer. That's what it means to be born again. That's the state we're under. The next one is not only we have to be recreated, we have to, he, the cleanse has the heart to be cleansed. Notice, created me a what? Clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. So we're going to talk about that. Wash me, so notice this is what Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, same thing. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. That's what he had to get out of him. Remember we was having a harm time connecting because of his sin with Bathsheba. Cleanse me. So there's the washing, the cleansing. Psalm 51, verse 17, a broken heart, a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. You will not despise. This is what Nicodemus needed, is a broken heart. A contrite heart. And the word contrite, it means expressing one's pain of what they've done. The pain of it, what it's done. So how often do we have to be born again? How often, according to this? Daily. So what do we do? I mean, I'm hoping we have devotions, hoping we have things in the morning. Now notice this. I want you to take, this is a unique one. This is Psalm. I don't know if you can read that. I probably should make it larger. Let's go to Psalm. But anyway, if you can't read that, go to Psalms, uh, to Luke 9, verse 23. First of all, if anyone would come to me, let him what? Deny himself and take up the cross. Whose cross do we take up? Whose cross? His cross, our cross. And what? Follow me. Daily. So now take up our cross daily. What are we doing when we take up our cross? We're surrendering ourselves, just like the song talks about. We surrender our, all to Jesus. We surrender. That's what we need to be doing every day. Notice. Steps to Christ, page 7, one of my favorite passages here about prayer. Consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. Let the prayer mean, take, thy, take me, O Lord, as holy thine. I lay all my plans at your feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me. Let, me. let my work be wrought out in me. I also would add to Jack's prayer is that the next tomorrow day, morning, I am going to be praying, Lord, use me in every way you can. Help me to share something with somebody. Help me to help somebody. That's what I'd be praying for, something uniquely. This is a daily matter, and each, each morning consecrate yourself to God for that day. So that's steps to Christ. Surrender all your plans to him to be carried out and given up as his, in his province, as the strength, as shall indicate. Thus, day by day, you may be given your life into the hands of God, and thus your life will be molded more and more after the life of Christ. Why do not we see more conversions in our church daily? It's because we fail to do this very thing that prayer is asking. So, because, for as Adam and all died, but in Christ shall all be made alive. Notice this. <coughs> the, very, the new birth is a rare experience in this day, age of the world. I want you to catch the solemnity of this, or how solemn this is, let me put that word. The new birth is a rare experience in this age. This is the reason why there are so many perplexities, where? In the churches. 
Many, this is taken from Adventist commentary, but Ellen White's comments on, on uh, that particular passage. Many, so many, who assume the name of Christ are unsanctified and unholy. They have not been baptized, but they're what? Buried alive. Sin did not die, and therefore they did not rise to the newness of the life of Christ. Pretty solemn, isn't it? Last C. <coughs> Just moving right along. I don't want you guys to sleep on me. The convert converts the others. So notice Psalms 51. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be what? Converted to you. That's what our testimony is for. This is Psalm 51, 15. Lord, open my lips. In fact, he's concluding, that's what he's doing, that your mouth may declare your praise. Can you get down there? All right. Now, one thing, let me back up, back up here. One thing that you'll know that you've been born again is that we have fellowship with one another. There's a connection that we have with one another. But if we walk in the Lord, if we walk in the light as he is in light, then we have what? Fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus. Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. In reflecting Christ, the converting power of God must be upon the hearts. We must study the life of Christ and imitate his pattern. We must dwell upon the perfection of his characters and thus be changed into him. Now, I may have repeated myself with this one, but I'm going to say it anyway. This, we must study the life of Christ. There was a guy that I knew in one of the churches back in Nebraska. And one day, we had, I had, when I had my normal prayer meeting, he showed up, no one else did show up. Usually there was two or three there in the little town. And he knows where it's at. So I have to be careful. But he said, you know, have you ever read the gospel, he asked me. And I said, I did. And he said, you know, it's the most boring part of the Bible. The most boring part of the Bible. Why do you think it was boring to him? Because he wasn't imitating the divine pattern. He was not studying the life of Christ. Now, you know what he had a problem with? Pornography. So the reason why it wasn't exciting to him is because he was excited by other things. We must dwell upon his perfect character and be changed into his image. Well, how do you do that? Well, you just watch his, that's what the gospel teaches. And this is God in the flesh. No one will enter the kingdom of God unless this his will is brought into captivity with the will of Christ. Now notice this. Here is, here is the conversion of Nicodemus. How long did it take him to be converted? How long? He started at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, three and a half years. So this is the cross, at the cross. Pilate gave him permission, so Joseph of Arimathea took down the body of Jesus, and who else? Nicodemus, who came at first to Jesus by night, also came. And then they took the body of Jesus, and bound him in strips and linen and with spices as the custom of the Jews were. So notice, the two are together, open before anyone, before, even before the Jews after they crucified him, and they took it. So there's this fellowship, there's connecting with him. Is that my echo? All right. So in 1 John, when we read 1 John, you'll see that there's five elements of one's being born again. Now, John is also the one that says that one must be born again. This is the conclusion, but here's the five. All right, back up. A born-again Christian does what? Practices right doing. 
He does not practice sin. A born a Christian loves others, regardless of what they may do to him. He believes Jesus is his or her savior. And finally, a born again person overcomes the world by his faith in <coughs> Jesus. So here's my final story. If I can get to this, I think I'll do this story. This. this is a picture of our family, many years young. Many years young. I think it's the, one of the last pictures we had as a family. My sister Bonnie dies in two, December 21, 2000. My dad dies in September of 2017. My mother dies four months of the day later. Now, in between those two, we're going to see that as my, my wife's mother dies. Then my brother Clifford dies. And then in August of, of last year, my brother dies. So basically, even only Joel and I left of the whole family. Kind of took us out. And this is, you can't see those with those dates and those yellow markers. There's less than a year those five died. Well, Bonnie, but the four died. Less than a year. Now I'll get my story straight here. Now this is my brother and I, which you can see is Brother Clifford and I. And for most of my life, my brother was pretty critical of me. Because I was the one and only firstborn. That means I got all their money did everything I needed to do, but I didn't have anything left. But, I, but that's, he just did not like that. He just did not like that. Of course, he was a very good. Now, but he had a problem believing that God really cared for him. All his life, he had this problem. So, he lived with my parents on the last 10 years of his life, and he really took care of them because there are things that they could not do for themselves. But after my parents moved to assistant living, he could have stayed there if he had the funds to do it, but he didn't. He lost his job. And because of that, I had to sell the house from underneath him. That made him even worse. And then to, d to get all that, he lost his job and then he disappeared. He just took off in his car. Well, he came down and helped us for a while, which was a blessing. It really was a blessing. And then he disappeared for a year. We never heard where he came from, or where he went to. So what we found out was that later he was contacted. He contacted, but it wasn't me, because he was mad at me for selling the house underneath him. But he contacted my sister. And where he was living at, if you can see that, I'll try to point that out for you. He lived in a town called Quartzsite. A quartz site is a town about, what would you say, Shirley, during the, wind, the summertime? What would you say quartz site would be? 3,000? About 2,000 people? Maybe five. But if you can see, there's, there's Phoenix over here. Let me go back. That's the wrong one. Uh, there's Phoenix here. Right here is the California state line. Here's high Interstate 10, and the, this, it's the last town before you cross in the, into um, California. It's named after quartz stones that are around that, in that area. That's why it's called Quartzsite. But in the wintertime, it swells to about 10,000 or more, maybe 20. It's amazing. And that's where my brother lived at. That's where he lived at. So, so he, then he calls my sister Joella and um, he said he was struggling with colon cancer. Now we knew he had colon cancer, but it got out of hand. And then he said to Joella that he's afraid of dying alone. He said he remember one time he woke up, because of the treatment, he woke up and um, he said that he was out, he was out, um, he was, went to the mailbox to pick up some mail. Then the next thing he knew, he was, he was in his bed and he didn't remember how he went out there and how he came back, didn't know it. So he was afraid. So he said, well, what, what, what can we do about it? Well, my sister finally got in contact with us as a family. My mother wasn't doing very well at that time. 
But anyway, we worked it with that, with Joel and I working together with Clifford, you know, we finally, on communication terms, at least we were. Now, as I said, my brother was afraid of dying, but what was interesting was, sometime later, that we knew that, De and this is, this is Shirley, you, know, you can probably recognize Shirley, and the other, the people in the middle, the other side, the guy with the farm shirt is, is um, Dwayne, and, and the, his wife is Donna. Now this is in uh, Clifford's trailer, in Clifford's trailer that was in Quartzite. Now how, we did, how did we get there? Well, my wife and I, my wife knew these people from Wadena, Minnesota. They were lifetime members of there, and surely that's where Shirley grew up. That's where her local church was in Wadena, Minnesota. And we found out during Shirley's mother's funeral that they, they were in, they were in um, Arizona. And we, and we said, well how, well, how did you get there? Well, we do that every winter. And he said, what, where do you live at? And guess what was the name of the town? Quartzsite. Of all places all over the nation, they were in Quartzsite, only two miles from Clifford. Now that's amazing. All right. Now it's interesting. The day my mother died, I think it was the next day or that, that same evening. It's the next day. The day that he died, that my mom died, he was knocking on his door. Now it's interesting. Clifford said he didn't like God because God never answers his prayers. I got this, I got this. But he said, I said, well, how can you say there's no God when these people show up? How can you say that? Well, the thing is, they didn't know that he might no, have no. Yeah, visit him. Yeah, we told him he'd make a visit with him because we just found out he was there. And they did, but the day that she died, it's anyway, very fascinating, very fascinating. In fact, he was at his bedside because they transferred, he had a falling accident, and so then he went to the hospital. And he was there several, about, what, three weeks. But two days before he died, he showed up. And he would not let him go. You know, he just grabbed hold of his hand. So I had this opportunity to talk to Clifford, and I said, you know, Clifford, how can you say there is no God? When somebody, we knew, we knew people, I said, and that's another thing I told him, I said, you can't get too far from me because if I don't find you out, I'll find you. But it's amazing, isn't it? Two days. <coughs> I mean, we were looking for someone to help him, and, and we just found that out. So that's why we flew out there, but this is, the, this is the trailer he lived in there. So God works. Three points. God first creates a desire to come to him. The second one, when he creates desire, he cleans the heart the more we stay with him. And lastly, we tell others what Jesus has done for us. This is a poem, I always like to end with a poem, A Clean Heart, O God, by Deborah Ann. A clean heart, Lord, create in us, one free of sin and evil and lust. Free of worldliness, free of selfish greed, free to see you are everything we need. A renewed spirit, Lord, put into us that always, that one that always will put in you, put its trust. Alert and resistant to the lies Satan tells, one where your own spirit abides and dwells. Create a, a clean heart, create a right spirit bestow. Lord in our lives, 
Lord, live in our lives so we may know, so your will we may know. May God bless us. In closing, let us turn our hymnal to hymn number 191. 191. What's that? Okay.